Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man who replaced the airbag in his car with a hefty bag full of jello. It's John Levengood. <laughs> well, at least I would have survived that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I ripped that off of uh, Cheap Pete from, from a Chris Rock comedy album. Actually, he did that in I'm Gonna Get You, Sucker, too, which I love that little cameo he has in there. But I had to bring it up for this, for this Final Destination 2, because that scene always gets me. You know what's great is that that is, in Final Destination 2, what Terry's abrupt bus death was in Final Destination 1. It was the abrupt catch-you-off-guard, really fun death that even people who don't laugh at horror movies probably had an awkward laugh after that happened. It, it gets me. And I heard the placement was all wrong for the scene, but the way they made it work, I loved and in the Infinifilm, I don't know if you were able to watch this, but I have the Infinifilm of Final Destination 2. And during the movie, during each kill, you could click on a little clip that was about two minutes long, and they showed you exactly how they did it. So I got to watch how That's... she got her head wedged onto a PVC pipe. Poor thing. You know what? That character is... I mean, she's supposed to be the high-strung, kind of annoying character, but she brought a lot of pragmatic humor. And I don't know. I... I really kind of liked that character when if you're, you know, if you have a friend who's like a, a law firm in a law firm trying to make partner, if you've got someone who just started like a, a residency as a doctor or someone who started their own business, like I, I certainly have an appreciation for those high strung, uh, you know, young professionals. Like I'm, I, I like that character. And she was uh, what, what Keegan Connor Tracy, she was uh, who played cat. She was cast like five days before the movie started. So for a normal, like, she's basically death fodder in this movie. But you're right, the scene where they throw a cigarette onto her um, uh, windshield wipers, which I don't know how that stuff stayed on there when she's going 70 miles an hour. But, uh, I don't, yeah, you're right, she did a lot with it. And, you know, this this movie, actually, it has a lot of talent, behind, like, behind and in front of the camera. The director, John, this is going to blow your mind. I know, the, I know you know this, John, but the director, David R. Ellis, did second unit for Deep Blue Sea. I would have never known that. I, I I would never know who was second unit on anything, but that's really cool to know. And like, uh, you know second unit, right? What, what that's all about? I, I actually don't prop, well, educate me and our listeners. Yeah. So second unit, when you say that, what I think of is someone who comes on to do reshoots or someone who does the shots when all the main actors aren't in it. That's what I would, that's what I would assume. Yeah, uh, you're, you're very close with the, the, the second one. So you'll hear a lot of times where uh, in Final Destination 3, they had a second unit that was going around. We're going to talk about that as well. During the what the Home Depot scene, the second unit got all the insert shots that the directors had no interest in getting. They were like, "I'm not. We're not doing that. We we made second unit do it." But then you have second unit where David R. Ellis, this director, he also worked on Forty Seven Ronin, Matrix Reloaded, Soldier, which we talked about, Harry Potter, mm. Water World, which we've talked about, and Patriot Games. So. For second unit, let's say there's a car chase where you don't see. So in Patriot Games, that car chase with Harrison Ford and Sean Bean, the driving scenes where you don't see any of the actors, most of the time that's second unit. But when the actors are in the scene saying dialogue, then you have the director there. So like I worked on Splinter, uh, like we, we would call them like a Splinter unit on this like NBC pilot called Local Talent, where we just had to do a gag where a car ran a red light and other cars had to brake to not hit him. So that was second unit because there were no actors there. So David R. Ellis, I mean, he's worked on, dude, Matrix Reloaded, Harry Potter, the Harry Potter movies, and Waterworld. Those are gigantic, even 47 Ronin, those are gigantic budgeted movies. So the dude handled action really well. And he was on set uh, during the beginning with, you know, the 11 days where they flipped all the cars. So that was really cool. But yeah, that's second unit so where you're just getting the, the action, the actors aren't in it. Or if you have stunt doubles, you're off on a second unit shooting. Like uh, on Cap Civil War, when Scarlet... Wait, when Black Widow is... I keep on to say Scarlet Witch, but then I feel like Scar that's... Widow. Yeah, Scarlet Widow. <laughs> uh, so when she's fighting the people in the in Lagos, then it, you could... It's kind of the stunts. That's second unit filming that. So uh, I didn't... I wanted to ask you before I, I went off on a tangent because I didn't want a second unit mansplain to you. Well, I, you know, I, I was not exactly on point at all. I was just assuming, and I'll bet a lot of listeners don't know that. But what's really funny is that as you started to explain that, I imagine the person who randomly stumbled across our podcast who doesn't listen to a movie podcast normally, and then our regular listeners, and how they would have both responded to you saying, you know that car chase in Patriot Games? 
Because, <laughs> like, so, like, I think of, like, if we were just, like, at Christmas with our families yeah, and someone yeah, walked up yeah. and just sort of say, you know that car chase in Patriot Games? People would just stare at us like, what on earth? Who could remember that? And then you think of our regular devout listeners where as you're saying that, it is the silent, what I would call geek nod. Like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. Of course. I mean, course. I, grew, I grew up <laughs> watching that movie constantly on VHS. And I, I remember, dude, I was probably 12 years old and I would just bust out a, a horrible Irish accent. I'm like, you ain't going to make me wet. Or, wait, you ain't going to make me wet or rubber, are you? Like I would, bu- like I would say that when I was 12, horrible, better <laughs> Irish act to people. Like, I didn't know it really, like, I wasn't quite hip to it all, but, like, that's what I said all the time. I was a weird kid. But, all right, how about so, this? So the, unit, the, though, the, does car, the car chasing count. Bumblebee. <laughs> or, uh, 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 insert John Wick 3. No, it, it takes talent. Oh, yeah. Is that, it, I mean, it's very... Wait, wait, yeah. so it's like, it used to be, and honestly, I, I only came up with a good idea when you challenged me to like think of what I thought second unit was. But normally when I'm watching the credits, especially when I was younger and I see all that second unit, this, that, or the other, I, I just think I, I'm like waving my hands, like none of them matter when really, if those shots aren't skilled shots, then you'd have this big, weird dynamic change between the main shots of your characters and then all the connective tissue shots in between your main shots. So it's like, right. They need to have some semblance of, of style continuity, right? Oh, absolutely. And so you, you need to, so a lot of times the second unit director, you know, was handpicked by the director and a lot of the big, so I worked on a movie. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it, but I worked on a movie that if you watch, it'll put goosebumps on the back of your neck. And we would go through and <laughs> uh, like, so we had a bus flipping scene where we flipped a bus. It hit a ramp and it flipped. Uh, we had a scene in an ice skating rink where stunt doubles were skating all crazy and then they would send the shots to the directors and then the director would get approval. Or I was working on another movie where we were, we were blowing up cars. And so after each blow, car we blew up, we would send it to the directors and they would give it approval. So yeah, it's just a, it's a separate unit. They usually don't have, I mean, big budget movies nowadays, you know, these big Marvel movies, they have concurrent second unit running with first unit. But sometimes you have two weeks. Sometimes you have one week. Uh, sometimes you just have people grabbing insert shots. Guillermo del Toro does not do second unit anymore because he hated the second unit work on Mimic. So some directors like James Cameron, they won't they won't let you touch. They won't let you do it. But other movies, budget wise, I mean, let's say your, your schedule shoot on a two hundred million dollar movie is ninety days. If you have to add second unit, it probably kicks up to one hundred and forty. Which you know that that's a massive expenditure right there mm-hmm. so they just do two units at the same time but yeah but that's what david r ellis my homeboy he also directed cellular dude and shark knight 3d and he came back for the final destination snakes on a plane <laughs> yeah but the final destination the fourth movie yeah and yeah which, which we're covering uh in the, in the next episode but i i don't know so you said something that i loved about final destination final destination 2 and final destination 3 do you, do you remember what it was oh yeah I, well i i basically copied it from my own reviews and i had <laughs> forgotten even saying it and then when i reread my own reviews from earlier this year it, it really rang true again like final destination feels like the good film of this franchise, you know, and then and then Final Destination 2 feels like the the great horror movie. And then Final Destination 3 uh, feels like a, a good flick. Yeah, I, and I, I think you're right. After watching all these movies again, I mean, this is this is good. I like I love what Final Destination 2 and I love the idea of the survivors from Flight 180, their survival, their their li- their lives, wait, they lived and then they died and then it affected, that caused a ripple, which dropped down to these people who are getting wiped out. That's pretty cool. Right. Now, John, so I've watched this movie, I think, three times. And every time I watch it, the first 10 minutes, I'm like, oh, no, like this movie's going to suck because. Right. Yeah. It feels video era at first, doesn't it? I like, like, can't stand her friend that's like, oh, yeah, the whips and the chains in the back. Yeah. And then. <laughs> There are two buddies who are just horrible, horrible people. And I'm watching it, and I always, like, as soon as, I don't like it when people, you know, I don't cheer when people get killed in movies, but when the three of them get wiped out, I'm like, oh, well, I'm not going to miss them. Yeah, at the beginning, it feels like a slightly better acted and written version of Wrong Turn 6, you know? <laughs> like, it's, you're like, oh, the, I mean, this is just totally throwaway, but this is one of those cases where the movie starts out, uh, where we're paying more attention to the first batch 
of death fodder than we are the first batch of survivors because there's only one survivor mm -hmm. in the car right yeah whereas normally we like in part one we saw this huge intermingling of the people who would die and who would live but most of our focal attention and most of the lines are from the people who would live so you're not relating as much to yeah this this almost deliberately whorish you know character i mean it was well acted she did a good job with her role uh, it was delivered. I, I knew those people in high school. But, yeah, it's like I'm just like, oh, God, like, are there going to be 18 sex scenes in this movie? And then, like, <laughs> yeah, the guys in the background, too, just the stoner guy. I, I, but I mean, but it's weird. The storyboard I, probably said stoner dialogue in yeah, a thought bubble. Just make <laughs> it up. And uh, I mean, I don't know. And then she her car is leaking what engine coolant. Or transmission or fluid. Or transmission yeah. fluid is what her dad thinks, yeah. And her friend is like, it's fine. We'll be fine. We don't need to stop. I'm like, no, you're not going to be fine. Like, this is not <laughs> – you're not going to make it back. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and her friend didn't even know what the problem was, right? Her friend was being very dismissive because – so Kim is on her phone with her dad, and her dad tells her on the phone, I think you're leaking transmission fluid. And she says – Okay, I'll get it checked out right away. And that, so it's like you don't even know what she was talking about if you're the other person in the car listening to those stoners in the back. She's like, it's going to be fine. <laughs> like, no, hey, so like, of, yeah, you're going to die. You're of, clearly going to die. Of the three movies we're talking about, we have the airplane, then we have the car crash, and then we have the roller coaster. So I don't want to get into four and five yet, but which is your favorite of the three's opening scenes? Opening scenes, uh, uh, well, Part one for getting to know the characters, but part one did the, did the most fantastic job with the characters in general. So, but if we're just talking about the death sequence itself, absolutely part two. This, this is gnarly. Like when everything kicks, you know what's funny? They actually tried to drop trees for real and the trees don't bounce. They just fall on the ground and roll away. So then they had to make seeds. <laughs> they, they tested it. There's a test on the Infinifilm and the, the trees just fall and roll. Like they looked really, they looked really relaxed, but that cop, he gets his uh, – Thomas, he gets his head destroyed by that tree. I mean, yeah, so that, when that thing bounces, <laughs> it goes through the windshield, through him. And, you know, that's like half of his torso up there. And you just see it go out the back with this, like, chunky, bloody whatever going out the back. Like, that, that was brutal and awesome and so well thought out from, from storyboarding to execution of the effects, right? And, and like uh, – Oh, what else? You, you have a motorcyclist um, that, who well, just gets smushed, which seems so basic if I was telling someone about it. But the execution of it and the shots, it, it, it was in the editing, I'm sure, was critical there, too. The timing of it. Outstanding. The the dude who wins the lottery in his little sports car, he is on <laughs> fire. Yeah. And, and say what you want about those CGR, CGI flames. The way that he is screaming in that scene, I'm like, this is still pretty pretty serious and then the truck plows through and just tears through him as he was burning to there's so many things in this scene that just like smack you in the face even when you're rewatching it and one thing that's cool because you said it, from one two and three the the plane the, the 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 lumber truck and the roller coaster what's what was the best to me that is the one of the three that people really talk about and think about in their real life. So I was I was reviewing these three movies earlier in the year, and then, you know, people comment and relate to them on Twitter and Facebook, or I just chat with people online. My friends see that I posted something or I'm asking for listener questions or asking for opinions. No one after Final Destination 1 said, well, now I'm going to think about planes differently. Well, now I'm going to think about, you know, if anything goes wrong with my um with my uh, food tray. That That, you know, you might think of the movie – but it's not really affecting your thought process much. It's not affecting your paranoia. People never said, well, now I'm not getting on a roller coaster again. Uh, you know, but but with this, your brother commented, I will never th I, I never stay behind a lumber truck now. And someone else <laughs> told me when I was at Hunapu's Day in Tampa.